Okay, so in chapter 3, we're going to be focusing on uh, straight lines. Uh, in the previous chapter, we talked about uh, a bunch of different types of graphs. One of those was a straight line, but then we also talked about parabolas, hyperbolas, inverse square curves. Well, in the next few chapters, we're going to be focusing on some of these uh, individual types of graphs. So uh, the first family of graphs, like I said, that we're going to look at is uh, line graphs that are linear, straight lines. So for this particular chapter, or section I should say, we're going to be focusing on uh, slope-intercept form, which is in the form y equals mx plus b. So make sure you get what I have highlighted here. This is really important. Now some of this is review, because you've seen y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form, before. Now you know letter m represents the slope when it's in this form. Now remember we also talked about slope as being the rate of change. So oftentimes, that's another way to look at it. Like when we're looking at story problems, like we will be in a minute, recognizing that the rate of change is the same as a slope is going to be significant. And I know that you, you recognize B as being the y-intercept, but we also need to remember that the y-intercept is going to be where x is 0. So in other words, another way of looking at the y-intercept is it's the initial value. or the initial amount, what you're going to be starting out with. That is going to be really, really helpful when we look at some story problems. So speaking of story problems, let's look up above here. We're going to look at some situations that represent what we call constant increase in co or constant decrease situations. Uh, so that if it's constant increase, it means you're constantly increasing by the same amount, or decrease would be the vice versa of that. So let's look at uh, this first example. It says, Noah usually waits until he has only one gallon of gas left in his car before filling up. Suppose the gas pump pumps at a rate of six gallons per minute. Write an equation for a function representing the amount of gas in Noah's tank x minutes after he starts pumping gas. The tank holds 17 and a half gallons when full. Now, the goal in any story problem is to first recognize, well, what are we trying to find? Because that will help us maybe figure out where to start. So it just says we just need to write an equation for a function representing the amount of gas uh, in Noah's tank x minutes after he starts pumping gas. So we're just going to look for an equation here. We're not looking for a number. Now remember, we're going to put these in the form y equals mx plus b, where m represents your um, slope or your rate of change, and b represents your initial amount. What's, well, let's look at some of the uh, key numbers here. We know that he waits until he has one gallon of gas left in his car before filling up. And he pumps at a rate of six gallons per minute, or the pump pumps at a rate of six gallons per minute. So those are the numbers that we're going to use um, in our equation. The 17.5, we're going to use that in a minute, but that just tells us how much is going to be in there when the gas tank is full. Um, but first off, we want to look at what are we starting out with? What's our initial amount? Our initial amount in this case is going to be one gallon. That's how much he's, when he goes to the gas uh, station, he knows that he has one gallon of gas left in his car. So that's your initial amount. That's what he's starting out with. So we're going to use A of X. We're going to use this to represent the amount of gas. Uh, in the tank x minutes after starting okay now why am I recognizing this why am I saying a of x instead of y or um, uh, they ask us to write an equation for a function so I want to make sure that I write this in function notation so I'm going to say A of X, the amount of gas that's going to be in the tank, is going to be equal to, well, there's two ways we could write this. I'm going to write it this way just because this is the order that it gives us. It might be easier to start out this way. One gallon is what we start out with. So I'm starting out with that one gallon. So what are we doing? We're adding to that one gallon. So we're going to be adding at a rate. There's a hint right there that that's going to be your slope. That's our rate of change. Six gallons every minute. 
or we could say a of x equals 6x plus 1. Either answer is fine. Now, why do they give us the 17 and a half gallons when full? Well, oftentimes, we're going to be asked to find the domain and range. Now, let's actually start out with the range in this case, because I know that the range in this case represents the amount of gas that's in his tank. And when you think of it, he's starting out with one gallon of gas, and his tank holds 17 and a half gallons when full. So the range for this oops, will be the set of all y's such that y goes from 1 to 17 and a half gallons. Because he's never going to go all the way down to zero, zero, no gallons of gas. He's not going to go all the way to he runs his tank empty. The lowest he's going to go. And again, this you can use a colon or a line there. I'm going to use a colon so that we don't uh, get confused with the one. But the lowest he's going to go is one gallon of gas, and he could go all the way up to 17 and a half gallons of gas. His domain is going to be the set of x's. Now remember, his domain represents the time it takes to pump the gas. Well, he starts out with not pumping any gas at all, so his time is going to be at zero, to the point where his tank is full. And his tank is going to be full when there's 17 and a half gallons in there. So what we need to do is we need to figure out, well, how much time would it take for him to fill up to 17 and a half gallons? So we're going to set up an equation. We're going to say 17.5 is when it's full equals 1 plus 6x. We want to figure out what x is going to be. So I start out by subtracting 1 from both sides, giving me 16.5 equals 6x. Divide both sides by 6, and when you do that, uh, you get 2.75. So what we just found was that the domain in this scenario is going to go from 0 to 2.75 minutes. And, the, and again, the reason for that is you're not going to have anything larger than 2.75 minutes because he's not going to fill any more than 17 and a half gallons of gas. So if you were asked, even though they didn't ask for the domain and range, that's how you would do it, and that's why they give you how much the tank would hold. Okay, let's look at, why don't you guys do the next one on your own, set up that equation. Uh, so why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so in this one it says a pool contains 85 gallons of, ga uh, 85 gallons of water. Suppose a hose adds water to the pool at a rate of 7 gallons per minute. Write an equation for a function representing the amount of water in the pool t minutes after the hose is turned on. And again, the pool can hold 1,359 gallons of water. We would use that to find the domain and range, which we don't necessarily have to do in this situation. Let's just write out the equation. The equation, again, we can use a of x, and they ask us to write this as a function, and we're referring to the amount of water that's in the pool. So you're starting out with, your initial amount is 85 gallons of water. That's what you're starting out with. Now you're adding water to the pool at a rate, again, and there's your hint there, that your rate of change is going to be 7 gallons of, uh, per, of water per minute. So this would be your equation, or you could use x, you could use t for time. Again, variables, in this case, whatever variable you want to use is fine. Let's look at some other ones where we're going to have to graph it. Here it says a pond with about 26 acre feet of water needs to be drained for repairs to its levee. Engineers determine that 8 acre feet of water can be safely drained per day. So they ask us to start out by writing a linear equation to model the situation. So let's look first at what our initial amount is. So the initial amount is that we're starting out with 26 acre feet of water, and we're draining it at 8 acre feet of water per day. So let's set up a function to say, well, I guess it just says linear equations. So we don't have to write it in function form. So we'll just say, um, I guess they have us writing it out in function form after all, looking at the graph. So they have us, uh, the y-axis they want us to use is m of t, meaning the amount of water after a certain amount of time, which is measured in days right now. 
n. So t represents the number of days. So we're starting out with 26 acre feet of water, and it's being drained. So that means we're losing 8 acre feet of water per day. So this would be your equation. Now it says, how many days until the pond is going to be empty? Well, empty means that it's going to be zero. So we want to figure out, well, where would we put zero? Well, zero, if I put that in for t, means that we want, we'd be figuring out how much water is left after zero days. We want to figure out how many days it would take for it to get to zero uh, acre feet of water. So I'm going to put zero in for the m of t. So when I solve this, I'm going to start by subtracting 26 from both sides, or you can start by adding 8t from both sides. Either way will give us the right answer in the wrong, long run. So when I divide both sides by negative 8, I'm going to get t equals 3.25 days. Make sure you answer the question, so don't just leave it as 3.25. Explain what that 3.25 represents. It's 3.25 days. Now, what are the y-intercept and the slope of the line representing in your by equation in part A? So again, the uh, y-intercept represents your initial amount, which is 26, and your slope is your rate of change, which in this case is negative 8 meaning we're going down by 8 acre feet of water per day. Now to graph this, we're going to start out with, um, there's a couple ways we could do this. The easiest way to do it is because we only need two points to graph a line. We know our initial amount. Our initial amount was at zero days, we're going to have 26 acre feet of water, which would be approximately right here. We know that after um, 3.25 days, so 3.5 is here, 3.25 would be here, so after 3.25 days the water is empty. So those are our two uh, situations. So again, we have 0 and 26 represents what you're starting at, and you're finishing at the point 3.25 and 0. And so now we're just going to connect these. So again, knowing that these are going to be straight lines, constant increase or constant decrease situations, you only need two points to make a line. Um, so this is one way to do it. Another way would have been to plug in a couple of numbers in for t, figuring out what our answer would be, and graphing it that way. Why don't you guys try this one completely on your own? And so why don't you guys pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, so the equation you should have had is they use x and y in our graph, so we can use x and y here. We're going to use y equals, you're starting out with 42 acre feet of mud. And it's being removed, so that means it's going to be subtraction, at a rate of 5 acre feet per day, so minus 5x. Again, for these problems, you could have also rate them um, as y equals negative 5x plus 42. And it's just really important to recognize that your slope is going to be negative because you're decreasing. And your initial amount is positive. So it'll be a plus 42. So when will all the mud be removed? Well, that's going to be when the amount, when y is equal to 0. Because x represents the number of days that it would take. So we're going to solve this now. I subtract 42 from both sides, or you could add 5x to both sides. Let's actually do that this time. Let's do something different. If we add 5x to both sides, we get 5x equals 42. Divide both sides by 5, and you get x equals 8.4, meaning it's going to take 8.4 days for them to empty out the valley of all the mud. So as far as graphing it, we know that uh, our y-intercept is where we start out, our initial value. So our y-intercept is going to be at 42, about there. Our slope 
is negative 5. Now, some people might say, well, can't we do rise over run and say we go down 5 uh, into the right 1? You can do that, but remember, we're not counting by one unit here. That's why I don't like necessarily always using that method um, of using the slope to find another point in the line. Because we just found that after 8.4 days for x, y is going to equal 0. So 8.4 is going to be, if we're counting by 5, 0, 8.4 would be maybe about here. So there would be your line. Okay, so let's summarize what we just found here as, as far as what we've been doing. So in constant increase situations, such as example 1, as the value of x increases, so does the value of y. As a result, you know the slope of the line is going to be positive. The graph slants up to the right, and the function is said to be increasing. So all we want us to know here is that a graph increasing from left to right means we have a positive slope. As far as what to put in your notes, I would just focus on just writing down these graphs and, this, and the little notes here on the graphs. As far as these paragraphs that are to the left here, that's just describing what's going on in the graph. So don't worry about writing out all these paragraphs. Worry about getting this graph down in your notes if you're not using my own. Now in constant decrease situations, such as the second example we looked at, as the value of x increases, the value of y decreases. So the slope of the line is going to be negative. And that's what they're saying here. And in this situation, they say the, the uh, function is said to be decreasing. That's pretty common sense there. Now, when the slope is 0, that means that the graph does not rise or fall. The function is said to be constant. So it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's just constant. A line with the slope of 0 is horizontal. So it's a flat line. Now, if it says, now this is important to get in your notes. It's not shown in our graph over there. Vertical lines do not represent functions because they fail the horizontal line test. And, or the, I'm sorry, they fail the vertical line test. And they're said to have a slope that's undefined. So as we look over here, we can see that we could walk across a line that's flat. That makes sense. It just has a slope of 0. We could walk up a line that has a positive slope. We could go down a line that's got a negative slope. But if we were walking along and we came across a vertical line, obviously that is something that we would not be able to do. And an easy way to remember it is if you tried, you would end up falling into a nice little mess, and you would be undefined. So that's an easy way to remember that a vertical line is going to be undefined where all the other ones have a slope. And lastly, to summarize this last uh, diagram here, as it says if two lines have the same slope, they're going to be parallel. The converse is also true. If two lines are parallel, then they have the same slope. So in your assignment, if you're asked to figure out if two lines are parallel, if you don't want to graph them, find the slope of the two lines. If they have the same slope, they're parallel. If they don't have the same slope, they're not going to be parallel. So with that, that concludes this uh, little lesson here. So good luck on your assignment.